Support for Building Minnesota comes from the Minnesota Chapter for the American Institute for Architects. For more information, go to AIA-MN.org. Christine Carlson is the new pastor at Christ Church Lutheran in Minneapolis. She'd heard the building was special, so when she came to interview for the job, her expectations were high. I was expecting to be bowled over a little more right away when I drove up and walked up to it. But she wasn't. That's because the 1949 building isn't showy. Designed by Alil Saarinen, the famous Finnish-American architect, this church doesn't have stained glass windows or a grand entrance or especially high ceilings. Instead, the church has a tall bell tower and a brick box for the sanctuary. But unlike many brick buildings, this one isn't dark. I've been in churches that were brick before, and they always felt brick. You know, they just shouted brick at you. And this one is so soft that I think a lot about light first when I come into this space. And then secondarily, I start to think, oh, that's brick or that's wood. A row of south-facing windows sheds light on wooden pews. The windows are glazed, so the light is soft and diffuse. The front of the church is defined by three architectural elements, a curved brick wall, a slit of a window, and a narrow silver cross. Light from that slit pours across the brick wall at the front of the church, and then the wall curves toward the congregation, and the light follows. Sometimes it even dances on the faces of parishioners. I looked at them looking up at me preaching from the pulpit, and their faces were just illuminated with this light. <laughs> that was so powerful. I stopped what I was saying in the middle, and I said, I wish you could see yourselves right now. You're just illuminated with this light. Nestled among the pews are four round concrete pillars. These smooth pillars support the church's tall ceiling and brick walls. The dark brick undulates. Some people say it's like ripples on water. It, when you're inside the nave, it feels like you're in a cathedral. That's Marianne Wargelin. She's with the Finnish consulate in the Twin Cities. There's a kind of a sense of its, its height soaring above you so that you, the, the human being inside of the church, know the power of God. In the late 50s, the congregation decided it needed more space. By this time, Alil Saarinen was dead. So Christ Church Lutheran turned to his son, Aro, to design an addition. Aro Saarinen took the job. A few years later, he would become famous for designing the Gateway Arch in St. Louis and the TWA Flight Center at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York. When um, his son designed the addition, what he did was so finished, which was to create that courtyard. I think the courtyard is just... It's, it, it just marks it. The minimalist creation includes a single bench for quiet reflection, stones, and a few shrubs. The new building, completed in 1962, features offices, classrooms, and the Luther Lounge. Okay, we're in the church lounge. Yeah. It looks like I'm stepping back in 1960-something. Yep. Yeah, this furniture is all made by Noel, or here's a Hans Wagner chair that I'm told was had just fallen apart and was going to be thrown out. But the orange cushioned icon was rescued from the junk heap and refurbished. Designed by Wegner in 1951, the piece is called the Papa Bear Chair. Probably because its jetting armrests and wide back make it the perfect place for just such a fellow. Also in the room are about two dozen plastic molded chairs with metal legs. They were designed by the husband-wife team Charles and Ray Eames. This combination of spare, serene architecture and classic modern furniture makes the South Minneapolis Church a great place to visit. And many architecture students flock here to see the genius of both Saarinens. For Building Minnesota, I'm Todd Milby. Keep up to date on Minnesota architecture. Read the Building Minnesota blog. It's available at buildingminnesota.blogspot.com. That's the Building Minnesota blog at buildingminnesota.blogspot.com.